Good morning, everyone. It is 4.30 a.m. <laughs> and I am on cup of, whoops, cup of coffee number two. And we're here, I'm here with a flip through for the art experiments journal, my art journal uh, number two. It was started in 2017. This picks up where the last one left off. So here we go. So this was started on Sunday, June the 18th, 2017. I think I'm pretty good at putting dates and stuff, except for when it really counts. <laughs> I got um, some of these, actually four of these, the Primas. I think I've shown these in another video. Uh, watercolor sets, I think there's five sets, maybe more. I've only seen five and I've got four. And I think what I was doing was swatching them to show the colors in here in the journal. It was fun. Here you go. There's all four of them right there between the front and the back. And yes, these pages are glued together. Then I saw something on, um, this is Haley. Uh, I think her name is Hudriser. And this is one of her, her watercolors from Pinterest. And then she did after, or maybe she was testing the colors, you know, when she did it so I duplicated that and then tried to draw what she did with the flowers and then put down here below what it was I was using up above more watercolors just doodles with the lemons limes grapefruits oranges that type thing to try out my new watercolors this is a doodle with just circle circle circles and then I did a wash with black that I watered down to make it a gray and evidently I didn't do too well through here to make it look more consistent but you know I'm not a watercolor person I'm still learning and I can see all kinds of weird stuff going on <laughs> I love this page I cannot tell you how much I love this page there's a place on Pinterest again that somebody did a cityscape and I could not help myself I had to do a cityscape so I did this whole page is nothing but houses with houses, with houses, with houses. I just love this kind of thing. You're just kind of crazy. All of this is little squares, a couple circles. Just very cool. No color. Looks best in black and white right here. This, I don't know what this is. I, I don't remember where I got this from. It's probably from Pinterest, but I don't have an author's name down here. And I should have put one on the cityscape too, but I didn't do that. This one was an exercise um, off of Pinterest to do the dark versus heavy versus light lines. This one was originally done with this background pattern and then I learned how to do some kind of a, I don't know what it was, I think this came from Shelly but I don't remember from Crafting Mamas and it was painting paper, my, you know, my slop paper and it did two folds. I can't remember where this came from. Then I sewed it together. Then I glued it on top of this and I put paint samples in it. Don't ask me why because I actually do not remember. <laughs> but the, po the pocket is awesome. I love this pocket. And if it wasn't Shelly at Crafting Mamas and I'm not giving somebody proper credit, I'm so sorry. But I, I think that's where I learned it from. It's either her or Carla Cage Fish, one of the two. Mm. Okay. Again, these are just exercises that I do to occupy my idle mind, which is a lot of the time, evidently, because I have a whole book of these. <laughs> I drew this and then, you know, did everything with the black marker in the background. This one, I just love these kind of things like this, the swirls and all the motion in there. Love them. Let's see. Oh, skip one. All right. So this is from Bridget Riley. Can you see this? I don't want to bring you in too far because I always get out of frame. All right, so it's just lines, and then you just what? So simple. You just draw squiggly lines, and then you just do lines in them. It's it's mind-numbingly simple. This is another exercise from Pinterest. I don't know who is the author of this. I mean, who's the originator of the idea? I don't know. Here is um, Genevieve Crabe, this one right here. You just do a lot of pointy things and then curved lines inside the pointy things. 
Let's see, I'm going to get out of frame. Let me go back out. There we go. This one is from the Marimiko. Marimiko. They make fabric, and I think this was a precursor to fabric they were working on. This is the design. And I, I've used this person's stuff a lot because it's on Pinterest a lot. And for some reason, I'm very attracted to this person's art. Just lines, magic markers, and lines. Just nothing too crazy, but you put it all together and it just looks cool. Here's another one of those swirls where there's a lot of motion to it, where you draw the swirl, then you fill it in all with the tiny lines. And then I blacked it out again with the magic marker. This one says, uh, it says let's see, E-L-E-M-E-N-O-P. Element OP. <laughs> anyway, this one's really cool too. This is like so many of these other things I do. This has to do with basic line drawing and trying to keep a steady hand and spacing my lines evenly in between. This was a lot of fun. It took a lot of time, but I really enjoy doing this kind of stuff. Again, more lines. Here are more circles with the blacked out background. You can see that I'm repeating some of the same stuff that I've tested in the other book and forgot that I even did them in the other book and then went back to them and did them a second time. So at least I know that's my style and that's the things that I'm attracted to because evidently that's true. I keep repeating them over and over. <laughs> Here is Augusta Alazar. Augusta? Augustina. Augustina. That's it. Alazar. I like this, but I really like this one. And yes, these all came from Pinterest. They were a lot of fun. It's not exactly like the one in Pinterest, but I did the best I could. Just playing with, um, trying to figure out how to get, you know, circles interlocked in a photo or interlocked in a drawing. I'm not, I'm not proficient at it yet, but I'm still working on it. Here's another one that evidently was some kind of a bow or something. And each one had a different design, except for the inside of the bow had the straight lines and then there was shading in it. And then you did the outside of the bow with a different kind of design. Not crazy about this one, but it did give me a little, if I went back and did it now, it would look different because I can see where the perspective is a little off. But you learn from what's in the past when you look back at it. That's why I love having these journals. Because I can go back and look at them and see things differently that I would change. And that would make it better. Comes with time. See, here again, another one of these that looks like this one right here. They're basically the same thing. <laughs> and this was in the beginning of the book too. Same thing. <laughs> This is new. This was, uh, they look like tiny little leggy starfish. And then you draw lines in between them and you put little bubbles. This one was fun. Had a little color to it, not a lot. Just enough to get the point across. This one will drive your eyes bonkers. You may get dizzy looking at it. All it is is tubes with black ink and white spaces go in different directions. Curved lines, straight lines, checkers. And you'll see a lot of this in this book. Again, here's the other one. I'm trying it a, a different version of the same type thing. Let me see if I can go back and look at it. It's kind of the same type exercise. This one is with watercolor circles and then I just drew inside the circles. Again, not one of my favorites, but it gave me practice, and that's the main purpose to doing this, is just to practice. Same thing as what's on the other page, just, you know, on the other side. This is another one of the Rebecca Blair type things, which I really love. Love Rebecca Blair's work. Blair's work. Little squares with little squares with little squares with little squares. Repeating patterns. This was just kind of a free-for-all, Zentangle-inspired stuff. Tried color, abandoned it because I realized how much I don't like it. I don't, 
I really like more stuff in black and white when I do doodles than color. And again, I tried this same type painting or picture on another page in black and white. It was okay, but I really don't like the color. I just, I don't know why, but when I do this kind of stuff, I don't want all one color. I need either lots of color or black and white. I don't seem to be able to find that happy medium with the doodles like that. But I did this one with the watercolor and then tried to do this with another pen and didn't like it, so I abandoned it. Another Rebecca Blair did this one in color. I'm okay with this one in color. For some reason, it's okay that this one's in color. Here's another thing with the straws. This is the red, white, and blue straws, like the black one that I did. Learning how to interweave things so it gives them depth and perspective. That was very time consuming. Just a simple flower thing that I found on Pinterest. Another one, this is called Welsh Pixie. This one I don't remember. But I enjoyed this one, it's very simple. Just two colors, red and green, or teal and red. This one had a little more color in it. I don't know why I did not color this one and this one. You know, some black and white, some color. I don't know if I gave up on it or what happened here. More Rebecca Blair type art. I don't know if this is copying one of hers or inspired by one of hers. But it was fun. And this is the pink straw. And I decided that I really do not, I'm not a huge pink fan. I mean, pink's okay in the appropriate places, but doing all this in pink was not, I don't know, didn't get me that excited. All right, this was something I tried with color again and only put this on the page and abandoned it because I wasn't happy with the color. Just more boxes inside boxes. I really like this one. And this one is... By, inspired by Debbie Payne. I love Debbie Payne's flowers. I love her artwork. It's whimsical. It's cute. Um, it has the appropriate amount of color balanced with the black and white. And this is one of my most favorite things I've ever done. Although, you know, I do like this too. I love Debbie Payne stuff. Love, 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 love. Oh, look, I love it so much. I did another one. Here's another one that was inspired by Debbie Payne Designs. Her flowers are whimsical. They're not true flowers. Maybe the rose and maybe some of these with the petals. But they just, they're so whimsical. They're sort of like cat in the hat sort of stuff. All right, so this one was the inspiration to do a carving on a, on a leno block, on a linoleum block. And this is using Koi watercolor pens, this right here. This is a stamp I carved. I don't know why I stamped it on there like that. This one says Koi watercolor pens, Posca marker, Sharpie fine markers on here. And it says inspired by Debbie Payne Designs. And this was done in September of 2017, this one right here. This is, I think this is called uh, Valencis, V-A-L-E-N-C-I-S, Tangle, 294. I did this in September of 17. It's very delicate. I like using the very fine point pens to make delicate things every now and then. And then I just colored in, I think these are little Sharpie markers that I just colored in randomly in places. You will find a ton of these on Pinterest. This one was inspired by something I saw on Pinterest where you just draw a little a grid and then you just do one little thing in each one of the boxes and by the time you get done it creates a whole picture and then you put the little black um, you black in little squares in between the other squares and here look there's another one of those Debbie Payne inspired flowers this was fun I like this page this is where I was testing out carving flowers. I, I carved some flowers out of erasers. And here's the head to the flower. This is the drawing. And this was planning to carve. These two leaves actually are carved and stamped. This is 
the head is stamped, the body is drawn, and then I was trying to come up with how to do another flower, and this is the result of that. These are the flowers that resulted from the planning on this page. These are all carved in erasers, and these are different different carved stems, and what after I carved the flowers, I cut the stem and the head apart so I could mix and match the stems with the heads of the flowers. And these are inspired by uh, Lisa Congdon and Debbie Payne. So they are stamped. And then I doodled on top of them. Here we go again. There's the heads. Well, let's do it this way. Here are the heads to the flowers right here. And here are the bottoms. And this is playing around with leaves. And this is a whole carved. I did not cut this one apart. So here's stems. There's two leaves, and here are the heads, and there's just a whole flower I carved. For I was getting ready for December carve. And here, see I'm playing with leaf designs with carving. Wasn't happy with them, so I went back and tried to, um, tried to fix them. So what I did was I carved this one, and then I didn't like the way it looked, so I went back and I stamped it here, and then I filled it in with black magic marker. This one is a regular solid leaf. This again is a, a stamped stem with leaves. And then I was, I don't know why, I was just doodling around with fish somewhere. <laughs> Playing around with perspective on this kind of flower. Again, I think this is either Debbie Payne stuff. I think this is Debbie Payne stuff. Not sure. Playing with color on the stamped images for the flowers would stamp the head mix up the bottom with the leaves and things, and then I doodled inside them to give them a little more definition. They were fun. This one is totally drawn on there, and I just drew it on top of the stamped stem and leaves. This one is a petal of a flower, but I made it into a carrot by drawing leaves at the top of it and using the orange stamp on there. So it makes it look like a really fat carrot. Playing around with more stamps, using color behind them to see which one I like. Those are gelatos. Um, balls are designs where she did an eraser with stripes and then she would stamp it this way, stamp it, you know, back and forth to give it dimension. Ellen Vargo designs. The head is Roe Brun. Brunin, this right here. Now that is not stamped. These are stamps, but these are drawn with, um, I think they're probably mm, micron pens. Here's another Debbie Payne design inspired drawing. It's getting close to Christmas and I'm wanting to, I, I make my own Christmas cards every year. I try to come up with something different. So I was experimenting with the background where there were Christmas trees in the background of a card box that I made. So I was drawing these on here and then I carved a stamp and was playing around adding color to it, adding little balls to it to make it look like a decorated Christmas tree. This is the beginning when it started out with just a square. And that was the idea. And then I thought about cutting it like this. And eventually I did make one that was a stamp like that. I had to work with the dimensions when within two and a half inches by, I think it says five and one three quarter inches. And then I wrote down solid color. And, I, you know, I was working out the details on how to carve a stamp. All right, this one is Debbie Payne Designs, inspired by her. This one is that uh, Miramiko, whatever his last name is, V-A-T-R-U-S-K-A. -A. I love these. They're very simple. This came out of some inspired by this, but there was another picture in Pinterest that was like this, and I just love it. It was in black and white, and I did go ahead and put color on it, but I used subtle colors. They're not like color that's in your face. Here's the other one to that. It's in black and white. I use this as a screensaver on um, my tablet. This is, oh, it's these people's last names, I, I don't know, it says Los Van, it's V-O-O-R-T-H-U-I-J-E-N. Cannot pronounce it, but love his art, her art, somebody's art. <laughs> I like these, these were fun. Very bright, 
cheerful. You're either all in with the color or I'm not. I can't, like I said, I'm, I'm having a hard time finding that happy medium place. These are stamps that I carved when I was testing out the pattern to try to do a one by one inch square that would make a whole pattern that you keep repeating over and over and it looks like linoleum floor. I did take the flowers from the other page and this is the lino block carving that I made from the idea on a previous page. And this is the actual stamp that I carved. It was hard. Um, Zinger, Zentangle, Root, Variation, Paradox. These were just different names for things. This one was a rose with different flowers coming out of a pot. I was playing around with shading. Here are ideas for Christmas scenes for Christmas trees. Very simple. You can color them in or you can leave them in black and white. I think they come across really nice in black and white. Not everything has to be color. All right. I say that as I flip over the next page. It has lots of color. <laughs> just entangling, just tangling, doodling. This one came out of Pinterest. I remember this one. It's so beautiful. It was, was so black and shiny. It was lovely. And it was not easy to do. I have to say, that one's a bit of a challenge. This is a Debbie Payne. And I think... I'm not sure about this one. And again, I learned, uh, let's see, it says Mary Beth Shaw, Stencil Girl Seth. Oh, these are notes I took. Somebody was talking during a, a live, I guess, and I was writing stuff down because I didn't have a piece of paper. These are those three pocket things that I did on one of the other pages that I just love these pockets. I just took painty paper and made pockets. And they're just crazy. I just love them. And I glued them in the back. Don't know why. Can't explain it. Just thought they looked good there. All right, so this is the Art Experiment Volume 2. I still have the original book, that one of the original books that I started with to do a flip through. And then I have Volume 3, which is still a work in progress. So that's it for my flip through on Art Experiments Volume 2. Thanks, everybody. Bye.